Our double Torah portion, Tazriya Mitzorah, describes a disease that the Torah calls Tzara'at. Tzara'at is uh, a, a skin disease that also can spread on clothing and can also spread on um, uh, buildings, on, on homes. Uh, and the Torah gives a very uh, elaborate and detailed description of how uh, an individual afflicted with Tzara'at or a home afflicted with Tzara'at is isolated and quarantined and has to undergo a very rigorous protocol of inspection and purification before being fully rehabilitated. And uh, this is a very fraught Parsha to read at a time of disease and quarantine and concern about um, the contagious spread of, of, of diseases of all kinds. And I think, therefore, it's especially valuable to investigate a little bit further the nature of Tzarat. I uh, remember just you know, I know sometimes you, you read something at, at an impressionable age and it makes a very big impression. Rabbi Sam Schoenfeld Hirsch, he wrote a, a very uh, a historically important commentary on the Torah that in my own life was very important to me when I was in, in middle school. I, I uh, read it uh, uh, every Shabbat. And, and he, and these, these, these uh, portions is emphatic that Tzarat, as described in the Torah, is not a disease, not, not a biological uh, condition. It's a, a physical manifestation of some spiritual condition, but it's not a disease. And he points out detail after detail after detail of the Torah um, that would not make sense were Tzarat a, a physical, biological affliction in terms of uh, the fact that a, a, tzarat, a mark of Tzarat in someone's body, if it spreads... Um, even larger, then all of a sudden it stops being tzara'at and the person is tahor and can go back and mingle with other people and, and, and is no, no longer has, has any, um, has a status at all. That doesn't seem to make sense if this were a biological condition. Uh, the way in which the quarantine system works and the delays that are built in uh, to the process of examination also doesn't seem to be, would not be very effective if this were a system of quarantining against a, a biological medical uh, condition. Uh, and, and in fact, Sarat in the Torah does seem to be, uh, again, a, a, um, in, in a number of cases, a physical manifestation of a spiritual uh, condition. We have a famous example in Parshat Balotcha of Miriam being afflicted with Sarat after she uh, says bad things at Moshe or, or seems to take affront at Moshe's special status. We have the example of Uziahu later on in Tanakh, who is a king and he wants to act as though he's a Kohen and he's afflicted with Sarat. And we have Naaman, who is the... Uh, I don't know, the, the apprentice assistant of, uh, of Elisha the prophet, and he takes payment on behalf of a miracle that Elisha performed, and he's afflicted with Sarat. So uh, th these all seem, these are, are clearly um, uh, Sarat is punishment for some sin. It's a physical manifestation of something wrong spiritually, or of uh, Bazak, who's uh, one of my go to uh, uh, guides for understanding the Torah. He's, he suggests that the common denominator of all three instances is something that is. Um, uh, it's, it's a someone who is acting in a particularly arrogant way and uh, is doesn't understand their true status. So Miriam thought that her role as a prophet was equal to that of Moshe, and Uziah thought even as a king I can serve as as a kohen. And uh, Naaman, the the servant of Elisha, thought, okay, I, you know, I, I I should take I can take payment. I'm entitled to take payment for the work that that Elisha did as as a miracle performing uh, prophet. Uh, sort of common uh, discourse, Sarat is understood as being a response to Lashon Hara, of speaking evilly about, you know, saying malicious or de derogatory, damaging things about someone else. That's maybe what Miriam did in Parshat Balotcha. Uh, another support of that, which uh, I think it's Nechama Leibovitz who, uh, who noticed this, or at least taught me about this, is that Moshe himself is briefly given Sarat when he uh, doubts the Jewish people's ability to... Um, to believe him. He says, how are the Jewish people going to listen to me? Why should they uh, take me seriously? God says, take your hand, put it inside, and then take it out. And his hand was covered in Sarat. So that maybe was a temporary punishment Moshe received for speaking evilly about, about the Jewish people. Be that as it may, once we say uh, that the details of the, tr the response of Sarat don't seem to correspond to any rational response to a biological illness, but instead we say that Sarat is uh, just, again, a physical manifestation of something uh, spiritual. It really can separate Sarat from, from, from certainly leprosy, right, which is, you know, Hansen's disease, which is an actual uh, a condition that, that uh, is, thank God, today uh, pretty treatable. It doesn't I think, exist at all anymore, but uh, was once a very frightening uh, disease. Uh, that's not what the Torah is talking about. Uh, and, and, we, you know, and, and there's no, there should be no stigma 
uh, attached to any physical illness that should not in any way um, lead one to think about oneself or about someone else, that there is some spiritual malady that, that, that caused them to be afflicted. And I want to say a little bit more about that. Ramban writes that the Torah, and he writes this in a number of, 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 of places in his commentary in the Torah. This is one of the core ideas of Ramban, Nachmanides' understanding of the Torah, that the world of the Torah is different from the world as we experience because the Torah is entirely a miraculous account. The point of the something being included in the Torah is that uh, the Torah is describing God's direct control, manipulation of the world and historical affairs such that certain outcomes occur in ways that the God is, is very, very directly guiding. And, and, we, and, and the way that we know that, because it's in the Torah, if it's in the Torah, then that's at least a hidden, a hidden miracle, and, and, and that's, that's the point of the Torah. Everything in the Torah for Ramban is miraculous, meaning that the world that we live in is not like that, okay? We can't assume that um, the unfolding of the natural world is reflecting a specific um, intervention by God, uh, because we're not living in the world that's already been included in, in the Torah. Uh, and uh, he says this actually very explicitly regarding um, uh, medical interventions. We are allowed and encouraged to perform medical interventions to uh, heal injury and to he respond to illness, because we live in a world in which olam kiminago no heg, in which uh, the, the laws of nature are just left to their own devices to, to unfold uh, according to the laws that God set up at creation. And in that world that we inhabit, we can respond to injury and can respond to illness uh, by medical intervention, and that is fine and that's endorsed. And so there's something maybe appealing and captivating about living in a world in which there are physical manifestations of spiritual maladies where if you, you're, 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 you have bad need outs, your character is a little bit off, you get a mark on your skin to teach you that right away and you can course correct in real time. That, that's, I don't know, that would be kind of convenient. It'd be nice to have uh, instant reminders of, of our sins so we could correct them uh, right away. It's just not the world that we inhabit, okay? We no longer are living in that, 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 that intimacy with God as um, the Torah describes, uh, and, and in our world, olam um, no noheg, the laws of nature are left to unfold as God created them, and therefore uh, we respond to um, injury and illness with medical intervention. That too is religiously meaningful, uh, and leaving Ramban aside, looking at, at the Rambam, <laughs> Maimonides, uh, for him, uh, miracles are a little bit embarrassing, right? Uh, a miracle is a sign that something was, was missing in the way the world was originally uh, created, and the natural unfolding of the laws of nature is, is the greater um, evidence of, of the greatness of God in God's act of creation, right? They don't need to go back and, 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 and fix things up afterwards. Just, you know, it, was, it was made once and, and, that, and done, <laughs> and, and without any need uh, for any um, uh, hacks and fixes, okay? So... Uh, with that understanding where, where, where the world as it exists, where, where the laws of nature unfold with, and biology is, is, is that reflection then of, of God's will um, with all of its pain as well built in in this uh, plan for creation, we have the opportunity for finding religious meaning in recognizing the good, the bad, the painful, and the sweet as products of this divine creation, and then we can respond to the pain, uh, respond to vulnerability, and try to alleviate pain, try to protect those who are vulnerable, um, because that, that's also part of, of God's plan, okay? And so we, we're not uh, gifted with physical manifestations of uh, spiritual maladies as tzarat is described in the Torah, but we are gifted with mitzvot in the Torah to take care of those who are injured and to intervene to heal the sick as best as we can. And that is, um, in so doing, we are then acting out God's will. That's, that's perhaps every bit as, um, as powerful an opportunity as what Sarat represented. We don't get the hints of spiritual malady, but instead we are given mitzvot. We have a full panoply of mitzvot that teach us how to respond when there's suffering, uh, how to respond when there's injury or illness. And uh, I think that's uh, at least as helpful, at least as meaningful as the system of Tzarat as described in the parsha. Uh, I missed the chance to talk about these ideas with you in person and show the Shabbat, but I hope you all have a restful Shabbat and a safe Shabbat. 
and a peaceful Shabbat and look forward to other ways in which we can exchange ideas and look forward to eventually seeing you all in person. Shabbat Shalom.